Welcome back everyone. This week we're at the Midhurst Trail Ride. Uh, and it's um, organized by um, Simcoe County, uh, the Scora people and the OFDR. So it was, um, a, this has been an absolutely amazing day again. I, I love this trail ride. I did it last year and I did it again this year. And um, it's just such an, a great organized day. And it's a long day. Um, and I'm here with my friends. I got Lucas and Chris and um, other people that I knew showed up that I didn't even know were here. So there's Darko that we're passing and his brother. Um, as as always at the start of this, I say always, I've only came here, came here once before, but um, there's 200 spaces, I think. And um, obviously there's people of all sorts of skill levels here. And it just means at the start, everyone's a little bit clumped up but everyone's just going a little bit slow. So, uh, yeah, it's just something you have to deal with. It, it's not a big deal, but it's pretty cool when you're going through like this, as this big old train through the woods and you just hear the rumble of just like so many bikes because no one's really razzing it. So you, everyone's bikes are kind of like low revs. So you just got like, like a deep rumble. And it's, yeah, it's really cool um, just, to, just to see everything here. See everyone. Big shout out to all the stewards and marshals and everyone who was uh, going through the sweepers, uh, going through like making sure everyone's having a good day, safe day, and everyone's having a good time. Um, it's just a train at the start, can't really do anything about it. Clears up after a while, bloody hell, whoops, I hate whoops, it looks way more dramatic than it actually is. <laughs> because obviously I'm just still, and then I hit a puddle, I, I should have gone to the left. Now my feet are soaked. Uh, and then we go around the corner, straight back into Bullwhips. <laughs> what is this, the Ganaraska? Anyways, right, now those whips are over, back to normal riding. Uh, oh, oh, I say that, and then we're into this. I think we're in the track next to RJ's, getting flashbacks to like, uh, getting flashbacks to Gopher Dunes, the mud but it's actually fine, it was only this little bit. Actually, on the way back, when you finish this ride, you do this tra uh, track in reverse, and there was people stuck in the mud, um, but the stewards were there helping them out. I feel bad for that car. We're all doing 50, because I think the green plates don't play, people are only allowed to do 50. I'm blue plated, so I could do if, more if I wanted to, but I didn't really see the point, because there's no rush, it's just a chill day out. But uh, right now we've made it to Moor Lake and um, I'm having a having a little blast because there's a bit of space in front of me. And I really love Moor Lake. It's such a great place to ride. Um, yeah, I'm having a great time just before I can catch people up again. But I mean, it's just the name of the day. Um, yeah. They definitely made this bit easier. I thought, um, I thought there was going to be a big queue of people coming up here because uh, this is where there used to be like a, a dip and then like uh, rutted out wheel log to the right and you had to get up it and it was it was not so easy but it's actually been like made it repaired and smoothed um, yeah so that used to be harder but it's now been made smooth I think they've been doing a lot of trail maintenance again because um, I'm coming through and I swear all well, it used to be bumpier there used to be a lot more rocks in the past but it feels smoother now, so I feel like they've been tidying it and making it even nicer to ride. Like, it's so flowy and so smooth. Um, but, uh, you know how I had that massive blister on my hand <laughs> from uh, Gopher? Uh, but riding a little bit slower at the start of this day did actually give me another blister, but not riding quicker. So I had a blister in a completely different part of my hand where I was trying to hold on to the bar and because of the more gentle speed, um, I was feeling, I was like going into every single bump and it did like give me another blister in another location on my hand, which is, which is so ridiculous. And then when I'm riding back more sprightly, like I am right now, a bit more lively, I'm having a good time. Um, <laughs> I didn't get another blister elsewhere. But just, of course, typical. And then another thing that I was uh, doing today, I was trying to stand for as long as I can during this 136 kilometer day. Um, and I wanted to really practice that thing that, um, to like reduce myself having R pump, like practice my body position. So when I accelerate, I lean forwards. 
when I break, I lean backwards um, to just try and reduce as much grip on my hands as possible. Because obviously, after <laughs> Gopher, I need to like reconsider. Like, other than just death grip, what was I? What could I have been doing to not give myself a blister? But I think I mentioned this before, but. Um, one thing I noticed was when I was leaning back to break while standing up, um, I can't really wiggle my foot, like I can't tilt my foot down because my boot doesn't really let me do that. So I have to kind of bend my leg forward, it's not very suitable. So I, I've gone now and raised my rear brake pedal a little bit, so it's a little higher, so hopefully I can press it whilst um, standing and led back. Um, it's totally fine to use while sat down, there's absolutely no problem, it's specifically standing up. but. What happens, or what I kept doing, um, the more I was practicing and the bit more tired I was getting, I was um, standing up and then I would put my foot on the skid plate and I think that would be the brakes. There's a little bit of flex because mine's made of plastic, so I push on it, I feel the plate move and I think I'm slowing down, but I'm not slowing down, which is obviously a, pro obviously a problem because my brakes aren't working and I blow a few corners. And the one time oh, I crashed right. today, I did exactly that. Do you have? Whoa. Do you know hand? Okay. It's all good. There's people falling all over the place. But uh, the one time I came off, I went to go do that and I put my foot on the brake, or what I thought was the brake, didn't slow down, slammed into a stump, went, went over. That was a pain in the ass. So that guy who um, we just passed, uh, he was on the Cove, the Cove, the, the Chinese bike, uh, which is really cool. I haven't seen one of those. That it's made by like um, a Chinese rider who... Um, was doing the Dakar, so you know it's not like uh, a, 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 uh, it's not like a group of people just like stole the plans and don't know what they're doing, and they're just like making a replica bike and don't really get it. That guy knew his shit and he did the Dakar, so I, I can see why the, the design of the Kobe is meant to be really good and really suitable and like and actually a good bike. So yeah, hopefully. Um, Hopefully we can see more competition coming because, you know, it'll always be good. So right here, uh, the twins from Sudbury coming down. Um, I'm really happy with how I managed to keep, keep up with them in this little bit. I uh, never thought I could could keep up. I didn't keep, I don't keep up for very, very long. It's just like a couple of minutes. But I'm very happy because once I, I, met, I, I bumped into them later, and they told me that they were they were going for it a little bit, which made me feel a lot happier because I thought this was just their trail pace. And in my mind right now, I'm like, what the fuck? The trail pace is so fast. <laughs> I've never ridden this fast before, but I'm trying my best to absolutely, absolutely, my absolute best to try and keep up. Um, I'm really, really not used to this. Whoa, almost made a mistake straight away. Still good. Got to catch up now. <laughs> just, just catch them up. I do know actually. I, I don't think they're going like full hog, but they're. Uh, right now, I was trying my absolute max to try and keep up with this. There's no way I could maintain this for an entire race, but it does like set a bar in my mind now. It's like, oh, okay, I need to be at least this fast, and that might help me move up a few more positions in some of the XEs. Um, I'm looking forward to RJs at this weekend. Um, I was gonna swap my front tire, but I decided not to. Because I think the grip is still fine, to be honest. Um, I do have a, a spare enduro, enduro medium ready to go up front, so... Um, and then, like, after that I might try a different one. Like, I heard lots of good things about Bridgestones and Dunlops and stuff like that, so maybe I'll, I'll try a different one for the sake of just trying something new. Why not? Um, I've got another V33S coming for the back. I, I really love that tyre, this tyre. Like, I spoke to so many people, yeah, even Chris got it, and he's just like, this tyre's amazing! Um, I think Powell told me about it uh, after Chloe's Kingdom, and I just had... I've just had such good... a good time with it, and I'm very impressed. And I've, had, I've got about... I think I've got about 40 hours on it now. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but it's lasted a long... a decent amount of time. Tread's still kind of good, but, you know... After 60 hours, I'll probably swap it. Maybe sooner. I'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, so I've managed to keep up with the twins so far. Very happy about that. But uh, eventually we get to a point where they just go around one corner. That I thought I didn't take too slowly, but then the next thing I know, I just don't see them anymore. So I guess they're just slowing down a little bit here. And then, uh, is it this corner? Uh, it's, it's one of the ones coming up. And then they just vanish. And I'm like, what the hell? 
think I was that slow, but they're just gone. Off to Narnia. Oh, made a mistake there. But, oh yeah, so uh, I was also talking about the Kove. Um, I think it would be really cool to just see like some more competition. Um, I don't know how many of you know, I, I'm mixed race and my wife is Chinese. Um, so, like, I've been paying attention to like what the scene is like over there just to see if there's anything or any opportunities or possibilities or like just what's going on. And as the country is getting wealthier on average, I see, yeah, like, oh, one other thing like you see they're, they're basically just gone now i see a glimpse of them like bigfoot in the distance um but yeah as the country is getting wealthier more and more of the people are getting into like motorsports so like rally racing like uh karting and cars and stuff are becoming more and more popular as like a as a hobby like racing so i'm hoping that bikes take off because obviously so many people there ride they use they know how to ride motorcycles they use them as their daily transport it's like a it's not a hobby thing there it's a it's a necessity there so there's plenty of people who know how to ride motorbikes so maybe um maybe the sport will grow and um then obviously with such a massive population then perhaps there'll be some new innovation new competition um and then obviously that would be cool because like what well, we've got europeans japanese and the british i, I know britain's in the europe but it's not part of the european union but you, you get what i mean like they're still basically europeans so it's like okay europeans and japanese do, do the americans make a bike I, i'm not entirely sure like europeans finnish is it finnish who make Husqvarna? I can't, I can't remember. Swedes. Is it Swedes? Something like that. So yeah, it would be cool just to get like another part of the world with bringing, bringing more eyes to, the, to sports like this and just, you know, a more of a, even more of a global presence. Like, I know that Southeast Asia, people absolutely love bikes down there. Filipinos and all that. Indonesians, they love this kind of stuff. Uh, like, so, you know, it's not a far stretch that other people in parts of Asia would love to do it as well. It's just, it's just currently not really a big thing. And and I think about like when I was um, on my honeymoon uh, in Yunnan. It's just like I'm looking at these like sparse mountains and just like it's just like this is the perfect place to just make race courses. No one lives there. There's nothing to, like it would be amazing. It's so easy to just create this kind of stuff there. Um, and then yeah but i guess there's a couple of uh ktm dealerships in the in china it's really hard to get bikes that you can actually do this kind of stuff on um and the import tax is crazy i think if it's like a, if it's not a native a homemade um brand they they slap a crazy tax on a hundred percent tax so I don't know, if your bike costs 15 grand it'll cost 30 grand there so you know can you imagine paying 30 grand for a dirt bike <laughs> well it's a little slippery there, um, but I feel like that was just me not paying attention and just gooning around. Um, but yeah, I, could you imagine paying 30 grand for a dirt bike and then just trying to import parts and stuff? Oh my god, the, the fees would be crazy. But, you know, if Kobe continue on, they become successful and start making lots of homemade bikes that are actually decent quality, maybe the sport will grow. Maybe we'll have more places to ride. <laughs> Go on, bike. <laughs> travel adventures and stuff like that. I really want to go back to Thailand one day and uh, try the Enduro Madness again. I, I, that was the first time I ever rode off-road. Um, and I didn't know what I was getting myself into for, but I was hooked ever since. So going back to Thailand where, you know, they make all the Hondas, um, that'd be sick. And I could actually ride a little better now, so maybe I'd be able to do... Did you see what happened there? Uh, yeah, so that was a... that was. I overran because my foot fell off because I, I pushed on my skip plate and not my brake. But it would be really cool to um, go back to Thailand and, and try like, there was a one trail that we were on and um, because of like the dates, I couldn't really go on like the novice day or the beginner day. So they just were like, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you along the uh, access paths to uh, with the expert. So you won't do the expert trails because obviously that's stupid. You can't, you, you can't ride them but you can at least do like the roads to get to them. And I was like, okay, sure. But one of the roads still had to go across uh, one of the things that they called on like the third day, it was called like Fuck Me Mountain. And I was like, why is it called Fuck Me Mountain? And they're like, oh, you'll see. And the whole problem was, was when you were coming, it was not going up, that was fine. It was like a nice little trail ride up, um, albeit thin, that's a cool looking tree. 
Um, but when you're coming down, none of your brakes work because it's so steep. And everybody going down is just going, fuck me, fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. As <laughs> you slide down this, obviously I crashed. Other, everybody was crashing all over it, apart from the, obviously the instructors. They were, having, they were just whipping down it. But I do wonder if I could do it now, and I suspect I could. And I think I would have an even better time. So right now I'm following Chris, and Lucas, so this is after lunch. Um, yeah, big shout out to the uh, organizers as well. They, we had lunch and everything, so it was good. Turkey, I had a turkey sandwich, uh, raisin oats. I don't like bananas. Um, and they you know, had some iced tea, so that was nice and refreshing. Give you a towel so you can wipe your face down, clean your hands, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, this is a good day. I really, really like the Midhurst, and it's good to get out and support the local clubs. Um, yeah, gotta support the clubs. If you don't, then these these events go away, and I, like I know I write score all the time. Um, I know the Ganny's technically closer, but obviously all my friends come up here, and well, as a result, we go right where my friends are. So, uh, right now we're following the uh, Subbury guys again. Um, I think one's the chair of the Subbury guy, and then the other guy's on the Kobe. So, yeah, it's really cool to cool to see that. Um, I think he said he wants to do the cord this year on the Kobe, so he's just getting used to it, setting it up, doing some training, endurance training. Um, they were ripping at other times. They're, they're honestly just taking it super, super easy right now. Like this is a this is a mental pace, and also wrestling 100. I think it's 140 kilos for the the, the rally bike, which is not a surprise. But then it has like 600 kilometers of fuel on board. Nice little jump in here. I didn't know it was coming. <laughs> I, I realized in the high side, I was like, oh man, I want to go do that again. But it's a long day, 136k. So, uh, yeah. I think it was 136.6. So, yep, good long day. Get out on like a nice little bit of uh, fire out here, get some breeze through you. Feels really, really nice. Um, you can see the ground, it's just literally perfect conditions. What a beautiful, beautiful day. But yeah, better go get ready for RJ's. Um, can't fix my pipe before that. But, oh well, whatever. <laughs> Still can't believe it. One fall. One single fall. Just tip over. Smash my pipe in. Out of all the other dumb shit I do, bike's fine. Silly little tip over because I missed my fucking brake pedal. Cave my pipe head in. Great. Good job, idiot. <laughs> The, the place is very well side posted. There's a lot of signs telling you if you've gone the wrong way. <laughs> Anyways. I think that's what we did this week. What's this? Anyways, see ya.